Hi guys, Chikasha on here. Today I'm going to talk about a geocache I made for a UK Mega all the way back in October. So it's a 3D printed geocache, and I think in the end it might be one of the largest fully 3D printed geocaches ever created. Well, I, what I've seen, I've seen a few which use 3D printed parts, but you are uh, they use wood as well. But this one is fully 3D printed. So here are my other geocache designs. And this one. Is a big one. So I've got it back at the moment. I'm going to tell you how I made it. First step is to open up the 3D model in the STL format into your slicer. So I'm using Cura here to open it up. It'll take a long time to load because it's quite a large file. So I need to rotate this round. Rotate. Mountain. 90 done so this is using a TAS 6 build area we'll just see how long this print will take so here I've changed the settings because I want quite a strong geocache I've put the fill density up to 30% I've changed the default type so the percentage is I think 26 it seems to be work for the features for this size, so just waiting for the time to be calculated. So here is the 3D model. So going around, it's spelled Geo Olympics, which is a mega event here in the UK. So this is who this cache is for. It's a going to be a letterbox hybrid released on Mega Day. So it's still calculating the time. Hopefully it's not too long. So the time it will take to print is 32 hours and 30 minutes. Okay, well that seems a bit long. I'll just quickly check how long the other print will take. File. So it's got all the lettering that's wanted by the organisers all on there. With the Letterbox hybrid logo on the bottom. So the time here is another 35 hours, which is a bit too long as I can't leave the printer on for too long. So I'm going to have to rethink my design and get back to it. So I took those large designs and split them into five pieces each. So there's 10 pieces in total. There's five pieces for the inner container and five pieces for the outer container. And this part will take 11 hours to print, so that's a bit more manageable. So all I have to do now is print all 10 pieces, and I'll show you once all that's done. So what is 3D printing? Well, 3D printing is a rapid prototyping technology where you can build up objects layer by layer. So that really you can create models quickly without using moulds, etc. Like normal injection moulding techniques. There's a few different types. The most common type is fused deposition modelling or fused filament modelling. And that's um, when you're heating and extruding thermoplastics. So there's a different range of production grade plastics and soluble support. So basically it's a fancy glue gun. You're heating up plastic and choosing where you're putting it. Um, the other types are stereolithography or SLA where you've got liquid plastic and you've got lasers curing the plastic at a single point so it's basically a, yeah, liquid plastic with a laser and it cures it to create a solid layer by layer. Digital light processing or DLP it's similar to SLA you've got a conventional arc light, LCD panel and it does the entire layer in one go instead of using a laser at one point. You've got selective laser centering or SLS there's powdered plastic with a single laser again. It doesn't need support like cover like the other techniques so far as it's surrounded by uncentered powder. It's a wide range of materials, nylon, ceramics, glass and some metals. It's got selective laser melting or SLM. And it's similar to selective laser sintering but it uses fine metal powder and it fully melts it with a laser. So the laser just melts the metal. It's got electron beam melting, so EBM. Fine metal powder. It's, um, powder is melted using an electron beam 
it's slow and expensive compared to selective laser melting. And the last one, you've got laminated object manufacturing or OLM. It's got layers of adhesive coated material, material sorry, that are fused together using heat, pressure and then cut to shape using a laser or knife. One of the most affordable and fastest ways of 3D printing. How do I get things printed? Well, there's three ways of getting things printed really. You can buy a printer yourself, so printers are quite cheap at the moment, or you can get fairly cheap ones from Amazon etc. So you get a printer, download a model and print it. You can go and go to a printing service, there's loads of online services where you'll give them a model, they'll print it for you and ship it out. Or you can visit your local makerspace or hackerspace, so it's basically a community workshop where you go pay a subscription and then print whatever you want. So when designing geocache containers there's certain things you need to take into account such as materials. So most common technique is FDM so there's quite a limited range of materials you can use such as ABS, PLA, HIPS, TPU and nylon. So each printer will have different requirements so printing of ABS for example you need a heated bed. Um, also PLA can biodegrade un under certain conditions so printing and other um, materials would be handy for geocaches. So a few things you need to take into, into account when designing. So one is do you design your own or download from a search engine and that's up to you. If you've got a design that you found online print that off or you can design your own using different CAD software such as Fusion 360. The thing you need to take into account is is the design waterproof. So maybe if it's your own design, adding space, you can put an O-ring to make it a bit more waterproof. There's different design parameters, so using different printers means you get different tolerances, and also how the design can affect the, stre the strength of a piece. So actually the printing orientation of the model can actually greatly improve the strength of a print. So that's what I've done with my Cryptexes. I've changed the orientation to make them a bit stronger. Sometimes you can have dual heads, that means you can do more intricate designs and use one head to use soluble filament. That way you can dissolve the, um, the support and get the design you want easily. Um, so what I've done with all my geocaches is to design them, print them and then take them to events to test them out. And that way I can see if they work or don't work at an event before placing them out. So after many hours of 3D printing, all the parts have now been printed. And I'm ready for the next stage, which is sanding. So there's, there's a few supports still left to take off. So I need to take the supports off and I'll keep them to fill any gaps up with some acetone as well. So I'll we'll use an acetone and ABS mix to fill any gaps. But the first step is to sand everything so it all fits together nicely. So I removed all the supports and sanded each of the pieces. So when I printed these pieces, I printed with ABS and there's a type of printing fault that you can get with ABS where the thickness at the bottom of the print goes out a bit and it's called an elephant's foot. So I had to trim that off a bit and through when I was um, going through the sanding I realised I made a mistake here. So in this part of the puzzle, I haven't stuck this together yet, in this part of the puzzle it was too narrow for the peg in this part to fit through. So what I had to do was get a rotary tool, sand that down here and at the other corresponding piece down here and use the rotary tool and made it large enough so that both pegs in this part could fit through. So now that I've done all that, it does work. It um, this outer piece can slide through the maze and lock. So what I need to do now is clean up these pieces. So a bit of soapy water, make sure there's no dust. And then using acetone, I'm going to solvent weld all these pieces together and fill the gaps up. So I've put some acetone and some ABS in a jar. And that will dissolve into a syrup. And that will be used to fill up any gaps. And then quick sand again to get any excess stuff off. And then I'm going to go over with some XTC 3D, which will make it a bit stronger and smooth out any lines. So here you see got lines with a print. So you've got the print layers, 
and that will smooth that out without having to sand. And then after that, I'm going to spray paint the outer parts so from the outside it all looks like one colour. So I think still quite a lot to do, but it's nearly there. So I've glued the outer container now, so that's using acetone to glue it all together and then a mix of acetone and ABS to fill any of the large gaps. There's a few small gaps still, but they're going to be filled in with the epoxy, which is the XTC3D. XTC3D, that makes more sense. So I'm going to glue the inner container together with all the acetone and then as that's drying I'll sand this down so it's a bit more smooth and then once I've done that I'll sand the inside again just to make sure that the tolerances are okay and then once everything has been glued together and sanded back down again I'll put the XTC3D on to smooth out and add a bit more strength and after that I'll spray paint the outer container and the bottom part of the inner container the same colour. So I've just finished cleaning the outer part. Um, the inner part is in the oven drying after being washed to get rid of any dust. So the next part is to brush on the XTC3D. So this is an exothermic epoxy. So I've got a some tin foil to create a container. And once I've mixed it up in a little cup, I'll pour it into the tin foil to basically spread the heat so it doesn't combust or burn me and then I've got 10 minutes to then spread across this container before it starts curing and the cure time it says about four hours but you can increase or decrease the cure time by putting it heating it up slightly so I think that's what I'm going to do I'm going to mix it together spread it across and then heat it up so it cures a bit quickly Hi guys, Geocache Owen here. Today I'm at G-Olympics, which is a mega happening behind me. I've got the show guide here and everything, so that's got all the information for the day. But first, I need to drop off my large 3D printed geocache, and it's one of the letterbox hybrids that have been put out for G-Olympics. So I'm just going to walk there. I've been given the coordinates by the organiser. I'm going to walk there now and replace the cache that's already there with the large 3D printed one I made. And it's finally finished, all painted up and shiny. So in the end it took about over 200 hours of printing and post-processing. But it's all ready. So just walk there now and replace the cache. Hi okay, guys, so I've finally reached ground zero of the cache I'm meant to be replacing with my 3D printed cache. Down here, we've got the 3D printed cache, which is, might be the biggest 3D printed cache in the world. I don't know, maybe. Probably the UK though. Um, yeah, several hundred hours of printing went into making that. But first, I need to get the stamp and stuff out of this letterbox to put in this container. So this is actually the first time I've come across this type of container. So it's got magnets and a lock. So I'm going to use my penny to try and work out the combination so that I can get inside. Sign the log, so I did find it. Get the stamp and put it in this cache. So I've unlocked the cache, so that pops out. The inside is a log, a stamp, and a peg. So I'll take these out. So they're the magnets. That shows you which numbers need to be used to open the combination. So I put all this back in there, and I'll show you how that one works in a bit. So I apologise that the angle that this is recorded. So easiest way to open this cache is to put it between your legs, slide it out, and start going through the maze. So I've done this quite a few times. Just keep going, sliding around. There's two locking pins. I keep it in place. I keep sliding, and then it comes out. So there is the maze. So it spells Geolympics. So that's the name of the mega. And there's two locking pins. So you've got one here and one on the other side. And the pattern is actually moved up offset and rotated 180. And there's two locking pins inside there. So I'll place the stamp and log that was in the old cache into this new cache. 
I'll put it back for the next person to find. So I'm back home, I've got the cash back with me. So this cash was only out for the mega event, so 200 hours of work and is out for about one day. So I'm not sure when I'll be making another cash like this again, so it's a lot of work. Um, so I think if I do make one that's this size again, I'll probably make sure it's out for a bit longer and either my own cash or another mega event. So these are all my other 3D printed designs. I've got a few more that I want to get out, um, a few different ones, a few more build puzzles. But let me know if you've come across a cool 3D printed geocache out and about. And if you've got any designs that you haven't seen but want someone to try out, let me know and I'll try and design it and 3D print it out. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. See ya.